Hello and welcome back to the course on Tableau. In today's tutorial, we will finally create our awesome visualization and get to the deriving those insights. But let's take a step back for a moment and look at what we've actually achieved. So firstly, we have been able to connect to a PDF file, a read-only static file, and extract the data from that, obtained from an open source data provider. We have been able to combine that with spatial data, which we, is not available within Tableau, which are parks, and get the proper layout of each of these parks in terms of their size, uh, their form, and also the distribution around the city. We've also managed to iron out a couple of data integrity issues, which is of paramount importance, and therefore this was no easy feat and such a valuable skill to have learned. But let's get back to solving the business case. All right, we already have geometry onto our sheet. Next, we'll take the park name and put that into detail. And the reason for that is at the moment, it is just showing one big polygon and we need to actually break it up to, so we can see where each of the different shapes starts and end. So we can just do that by adding it to the detail tab. Now, next, we can also just take the incidence and add that to color and make sure that that's the sum of incidence. And we know we want to just make it give it a bit more um, punch to it and let's use temperature diverging we'll take it from a green to a red and immediately we can see where the box are or the more problematic box are i do think that the borders are creating a bit of a um, yeah an effect here which we don't want so let's just go and take the the borders off and that looks much neater now we can even see the much smaller box as well what we'll also do is just to take the city borough put that on to filter we want to select all of them because this will allow us if we do show the filter and let's just bring it over here it's also selected as a single drop down but this will also allow us to navigate the city borough by borough as you can see as we scroll through them we can see what they look like now how it works in new york is that each city borough is funny enough also a county within the state so what we could do is we can just use the map layers and also just tick the county borders and that would actually break them up quite nicely into different boroughs and on top of that we can select the county names but uh, the county names funny enough is not exactly the same as the borough names so for that reason we'll actually just untick them for instance if we look at Richmond over there that in, ca in case it's actually the Staten Island although it's called an R there it's Staten Island so what we'll do is we'll just to avoid any confusion we'll take off the county names and we can then just rename these using the alias and we can just update these aliases so if we click alias over there we can take b update to brooklyn then m to manhattan q to queens r to staten island because we know that refers to richmond and then good old bronx and hit enter on him okay now we are able to navigate city borough by city borough to see which parks have the most incidents now seeing as we are able to navigate to these areas some of these parks have uh, you know obviously the color is adapted to the number of incidents and this is not correct we want to keep the same color rating across all of them so if we go into colors and just edit this we can just fix the start and end because we know the maximum is six and the minimum zero and we can just hit apply now if we do go in again you can see that it's not that dark red that used to be when we did when the um that it was updated the color rating was updated for the specific focus or filter let's also just update our sheet name over here because what we want to call this is the new york city parks and we just want to put the borough name in there so we can just pick it up from the, the insert option over there. So put the city borough and we can actually just make that bold and we can increase the size to 20 for both of these and just hit apply. So if we do navigate between now, we are able to see which one we are working with right in the title. So handy stuff as well. And what I also like to do is in our map, if you go into map options, you are able to set a scale and obviously I uh, want to set this to US as we're working in the US. So now you get a scale over there. So if you are focusing on a specific area and you can see how it changes. So on Staten Island, the scale is one mile and in Queens, it's two miles. So it obviously depends on the size of your visualization. 
then you are able to relate on how far and how close each of these sections or each of these parks are to each other. Now, you can also navigate the city by not only looking at the specific borough, but, but just by zooming in. And then immediately you can see even the smaller parks where they have more of a um, number of incidents. So pretty handy stuff indeed. So pretty cool way to navigate this as well. And this also answers our brief that we've set out to do. And I'm sure our client will be super happy with what we're delivering. Now, that is how you connect and combine PDFs, spatial files, clean your data, import your data, ensure data integrity, create custom geographic polygons using data sources from uh, open source platforms. Pretty awesome stuff indeed, and you can be really proud of yourself. Now, in the next tutorial, we'll be looking at a brand new business case and look at some improvements in Tableau relating to how we use tooltips and even look at a brand new chart type. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy analyzing.